Mickey Down and Conrad K, industry co-creators, showrunners, executive producers, and writers. Great to talk to you guys. Thanks so much for doing this. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. A huge fan of the show. And congratulations uh, to you guys on, on season one and season two. Thanks so, Thanks so much. Great to hear. There is a bit of an obsession with the show uh, among our audience and certainly our staff, mostly because it's born in real experiences that you guys had on uh, in finance um, and the way you sort of parlayed that into this project. I know you've told this story before, but can you talk about the moment where this was suggested that you turn this into a show? Yeah, sure. I mean, so me and Conrad, obviously you mentioned that we, you know, we, had, we had pretty short careers in finance. Um, and mine was different than Conrad's. And we left, uh, we left banking and I started trying to make it in you know, TV writing. And Conrad was still in the bank that he worked in. And we wrote a sort of, I say a sort of, you know, a prototype version of this show. And it wasn't very good at all. It was mostly just characters called Mickey and Conrad talking about how much they hated finance. Um, and it was a pretty derivative version of better banking shows and better banking art. And then we split in a draw, forgot about it. And then we were doing another piece with uh, Jane Tranter, who runs uh, Bad Wolf, who's the production company that makes industry. And she found out we were two former bankers. And she said, have you ever thought about writing a show in this space? And we said, yes, we had. And it was absolutely terrible. Um, but she, saw, she said, have you thought about it from the perspective of the, the youngest people, the people like you who were going into it for the first time? And that was the thing that really unlocked the show for us because it allowed us to basically Trojan horse uh, a sort of, you know, just a life London show into this, this bigger structure in a world that we were fascinated by, had been spat out at, and we thought would be an ecosystem that would create really good drama. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm amazed that no one has tried to do this before um, because there's lots of people who graduate out of the business. But the way in which you make it believable for those who are well-schooled in th words like reduction in force and inflation break-evens and uh, the, the, the conflict between research and sales, Mickey, I mean, how much of that uh, do you expect the audience to get? Uh, or, or for those who aren't well-schooled in finance, is it just sort of the overall milieu of the, pro of the, of the topic? It's a really good question. I mean, uh, I think we, we succeed slightly better in season two in making it a bit more intelligible. I feel like me and Conrad, when we went to season one, we were like, we'll, sh you know, we'll, 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 we'll kick ourselves if we don't make the most authentic, specific finance show ever. And that was to the show's detriment, quite honestly. No one knew what was anyone was saying. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and we thought, okay, well, this next time, and this was a, this was a great HBO note, really, the season two. Like, let's take the audience with us a little bit more this time. Let's hold their hand a tiny bit more. Let's not, you know, let's let's not, you know, let's not forget about making it authentic. But let's just try and make it a little bit more intelligible. Um, and hopefully, we we uh, we succeeded in that. I feel like I mean, you'll be you'll be the judge, and the audience will be the judge if they understand yeah. what's going on. No, Conrad, was was your experience at all like any of the five major characters we follow in the show? It's a very good question. I mean, the, the, bio, the autobiographical elements of the show, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the senior management figures in the show are composites of people that me and Mickey came across in the business. Um, and then obviously, you know, we're making a TV drama for HBO. If we wanted to make a documentary, we would make a documentary. So there, there are elements of it which are, of course, sensationalized. And, you know, we like... You know, we wanted. We were, ultimately we're making a piece of entertainment, so we were. Some of the story beats are obviously, again, you know, heightened. Um, the one thing I'd say that the show really captures of our experience there is the kind of the hierarchical nature of these places um, and the roles that you know people sat next to each other for twelve hours a day in high stress situations. Um, the, the kind of roles that mentors and mentees play in each other's. Uh, careers, all of that stuff, I think, is incredibly closely rendered to mine and Mickey's experiences of, of these institutions. It's funny you say that because, as you guys know, uh, the last two years, we've watched the banks sort of insist that younger workers come into the office, right? And you actually have a line, I think, in the pilot, Conrad, where you say, uh, or one character says to a subordinate, uh, that what you're going to learn here, half of it's going to be through osmosis, right? I mean, that... <laughs> That, oh, that desk environment is something you guys recreate beautifully. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like, I feel like there's such specific ecosystems and like, 
I, I know all subcultures, anywhere you work, it gets it's, you know, you, you get your own shorthand and it, all of the jargon and slang is, I don't know, me and Mickey, I think as writers, there's something about the way that people speak in, on a trading floor and, and the, the way that, you know, the cadence of the language and the kind of, the, the, almost like the power that people display in the way that they either shut people out by the way they talk or bring people in by the way they talk. And that stuff is all just really, really fun. Um, I think someone someone referred to it who's never worked in the business as listening to dialogue is like listening to radio waves from some distant planet. And I think that's kind of, <laughs> there's, something quite, there's, something, there's something quite funny about that. And as Mickey went in season two, I think we've done a better job of just, as Mickey said, bringing people into the drama a bit more. Yeah, no, we can't wait to see how some of these characters evolve and, and what happens to them as, as some of them get elevated and maybe others are not. Well, I guess we'll have to find out. Mickey, I'm curious to know, you, you guys, your overall view of the streaming environment and the content environment. Uh, this is obviously a, a very golden ticket to have in your pocket. What ambitions do you have going forward and where do you see sort of the landscape uh, being the richest right now, given that we're in this period of uncertainty on the macro, uh, uncertainty on content budgets and all the rest? It's, it's, there's a lot of it, isn't there? I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff out there, a lot of stuff to watch. Um, I mean, I really feel incredibly privileged that we were able to make this show. Um, we were able to make the show of HBO, which is the best place we could have made it. They, they've allowed us to make a, a fairly esoteric um, banking show with no IP, with a young, amazingly good young cast, but slightly unknown young cast, written by two former bankers who've never done it before. I mean, I don't understand where anywhere else would allow us to do that. Um, and yeah, I mean, like, there obviously is a huge content boom. Someone might say a bubble. Um, and you know, I, I, I will do. I, you know, I, I the, the beauty of being able to do this show is that I feel like we we watch it, we watch the characters evolve from season to season. We, we think, you know, we've got ideas about where these characters could be in three or four years. We'd love to continue to do it. You know, our focus is on doing this show. Like we've, you know, it's 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 it, it still excites us in a way that I feel. You know, I feel like we're in a, we're in our groove now, and I feel like um, keep going. Right. You know, Conrad, it's interesting. Uh, TV and streaming gets knocked and denigrated at times for uh, being a business in which, you know, the lowest common denominator gets you the biggest rating. But it's also mm -hmm. a business that allows for this almost hyper intelligent script writing, wouldn't you say? Um, well, it's not for us to say whether our, our script writing is hyper intelligent, but I would say, speaking to what Mickey said, um, HBO is the one place where I think two guys with not very much of a proven track record without developing any IP, without any real stars attached, where they were, HBO were brave enough to say, we're going to allow you guys to find your authorial voice on this bigger platform. I would say, is a, I mean, I would say it's becoming, I'd say it's an anomaly, really. And I think we got very lucky. It was, we're only here really because of the, the belief of our executives and our producers. Um, I, you know, I, I, just to tap onto what Mickey was saying in like, I do feel that there is a, I feel it as someone who loves TV, I do feel a kind of fatigue at the, the sheer volume of stuff that's out there. And I do think, you know, Mickey used the word bubble. I do think, you know, you look at, you look at somewhere like Netflix and, and their kind of, their growth trajectory and how it's like, you know, inevitably slowing down. I do think there is a kind of, there won't be as many blank checks written in the TV industry anymore. And, um, you know, anecdotally, like big, big, big projects with huge stars attached, these massive, you know, these massive packages that two years ago were getting bought without people blinking and now increasingly, you know, getting passed on. So I don't know whether that signals some kind of contraction in the business. I have no idea. I do feel like we entered it at just the right time in terms of, of getting something like this made, but I do think it's very specific to HBO as a, as a place uh, for creatives. Yeah, I think it, people who are familiar with, uh, with the platform could understand what you're talking about. Mickey, I wonder, you know, so much of the show is about um, the Hunger Games element of finance, right? Uh, the the, the zero-sum game between workers, the clash of egos, the, the cruelty of some higher-ups. Is there an element of the show that you are try in which you are trying to advocate for change in real-life finance? Do you think <laughs> banks should look at this and say, oh, you're right, we're probably doing that wrong? Yes. No, no. Uh, <laughs> um, I feel like... Um, you know, I mean, me and Conrad, we, we, we need to be didactic about what we were saying was about the finance industry. We love the fact that people make up their own mind about it. 
on the back of watching the show and people bring, you know, they take, um, they have different perspectives on the characters, but on the different perspectives on the world. Um, I will say that, that one of the themes that sort of revealed itself in this season is that it's very, very difficult to show vulnerability in a place that prizes, you know, or, which, which basically rewards being, um, which rewards uh, hardness, re rewards uh, not showing vulnerability. I feel like probably as close as we come to having a kind of, you know, statement on the, on the world of finance and, and really the basic, the, you know, the corporate world is in its totality. Like the idea that actually when you buy into this world you, and you buy into the idea of success and ambition in this world, you're basically saying, I'm kind of putting the idea of a fulfilling relationship uh, by the wayside. Yeah. Yeah, Conrad, can you back that up, Conrad? I mean, how much of this, um, it really is amazing. Uh, it's sort of a comment on the sacrifices that some people are willing to make to get ahead in that business and, and the ones that maybe some people are not. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree. I think it's it all comes down to the way people are enumerated and, and the way things are incentivized, I think. I think, you know, the, the, the joke that me and Mickey has is, if, if, they, if they could somehow carve out a way of qualitative, qualitatively evaluating the way you are with your peers and, and attaching some sort of financial reward to that. So like if part of your 360 review and your bonus was like, how sound are you as a person? Then I think these institutions have fundamentally changed. I guess we, <laughs> our take on it, as, as Mickey says, our take on it is we don't think it's that cynical. We just try and present it as we think authentically captures it and allow audiences to make their own minds up about the way, what the show is saying. Um, I would say that I think that th you can make a lot of cosmetic changes to corporate culture, but the way that a trading floor is structured, especially, that hasn't changed since the 80s, really, in terms of there is a very rigid hierarchy of promotion and bonus payment and the way people sit next to each other. All of those things are fundamentally the same. So I think we're kind of saying that if the ecosystem doesn't change, you can make all the changes to your literature and all that stuff, but fundamentally humans are humans and they'll be humans in the, in, in, within that ecosystem. Yeah. Mickey, you know, the universe of, uh, of finance-centric shows, I'm trying to think. There's Wall Street, obviously. There's Wolf of Wall Street. There's Boiler Room. Um, <laughs> did you draw on any of those inspirations or, or was this all sort of rooted in, in real life experience? Um, good question. I mean, I, I, we, yeah, we love all those references, the ones you, you just outlined. We love, I mean, there's a reason we write, we wrote a show based in this world. There's a reason we got into this world, quite frankly, because it wasn't actually about, it was, it was, it wasn't really about <laughs> the sort of intellectual exercise of being an investment banker for me. Anyway, it was it was the it was the aesthetic and the literature and the way it was presented in in art that pushed me into it. Um, and uh, and and you know it's it's very funny like those 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 examples acted for me like recruitment tools. And I feel like in some ways our show feels a little bit like a recruitment tool. I had like an anecdote a friend, that a friend told me that who is um, doing an MBA has said like at least ten people um, in the class had uh, had thought about going into finance because of watching industry. Which I, I was very, I was very proud of. But yeah, yeah. The other thing, guys, uh, that that is amazing to me is just the strength of uh, Amaya Harold as Harper, and discovering a talent like that. She is so original. Her delivery is so unique. Can you just talk about how you guys found her, Conrad? Um, yeah, I mean, look, Mahala was one of the. I mean, she was the in, one of the most integral pieces of casting, but also the one that we struggled with the most because we knew she had a huge weight to carry on the show. Um, she, and, you know, we saw, I don't know, Mick, you might correct me, but over 200 actresses for that part. And it was getting quite late in the day in terms of how close we were getting to production deadlines and filming. And we were quite kind of tearing our hair out. And then there's this thing with casting, which is, especially me and Mickey, we have a quite a sim creative symbiotic relationship. And like a lot of our decisions are often gut decisions where it's like a, a yes or no. And we watched her tape and like immediately, like Mickey was texting me, I was like, have you, did you, have you seen this? Have you seen this woman? And I was like, no, should I watch it? He's like, whatever you're doing, go and watch her immediately. I think it's her. And like within five seconds, we just knew. And it's it's about everything you've touched on. It's her command, it's her poise, it's that ineffable charisma that she has on the screen. It's the it's the vulnerability, but also total control, which was very important <laughs> to the character. And, you know, she's, I mean, she's, she, I mean, all, everyone in the cast, I think we really struck gold, but the two women, Marisa and Mahala especially, I just think are, are, are quite remarkable actresses. Yeah, I know literally from the opening shot of season one, it's so much of it is about uh, the, the way she commands the camera. Finally, guys, um, 
You know what struck me when, when we learned the name of the firm, uh, Pierpont and Company, Pierpoint and Company, reminds me of John Pierpont Morgan, right? Of J.P. Morgan. <laughs> Uh, are you trying to target one particular bank in particular, or is it? Are you are you shooting at all angles? Uh, I think equal diplomatic. Equal, yeah. equal exactly. opportunity shots. Equal opportunity shots. <laughs> Mickey, I think the diplomatic answer is, is to say uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we wish you guys all the best because you're bringing us really um, just a wave of original content and we couldn't be more happy for you guys. Uh, we look forward to season two. Thanks for chatting with us. Thanks so much. It's a pleasure. Yeah, our pleasure. Uh, Thank you for having us. Conrad and Mickey, you can watch uh, the season two premiere of Industry streaming on HBO Max.